David Martin Lloyd-Jones was born in Cardiff, Wales on the 20th of December 1899, the middle son of a poor but highly able dairy shop owner, Henry Lloyd-Jones, and his wife Magdalen, the daughter of a farming family. In 1914, the dairy shop having failed, Henry moved his family to London, where he set up a new business, and Martin gained a place at the well-known St. Marylebone Grammar School, which is situated in close proximity to Harley Street, where many prominent and specialist medical doctors have their consulting rooms and to which patients from all over the world descend for diagnosis and cures for all manner of medical conditions. At school, Martin proved to be a brilliant and able student and excelled in his studies so that, at the unusually early age of 16, he entered the medical school of the famous St. Bartholomew's Hospital, London. So successful was Martin in the progression of his chosen career that, at only 21 years of age, he was awarded with distinction a Bachelor of Medicine and of Surgery. He then went on to gain membership of the Royal College of Physicians. Further studies and progression saw him awarded a Doctorate of Medicine, and at only 23 years of age he became assistant to Sir Thomas Horder, the Royal Physician. Although Martin excelled at medicine, he began to feel another irresistible call upon his life, as the Holy Spirit was working in him in a powerful way, both to convert him to Christ and to take him away from a potentially distinguished and lucrative career in medicine. However, none of Martin's medical training was to be wasted, and it is clear that had he not become a physician in the earlier part of his life, his later career would never have had the power that it did. For most of us, the road to faith in Jesus Christ is not direct and straightforward, but rather winding, with many roadblocks on the way. This was true for Martin. Thinking himself to be already a fairly good Christian, he had become a regular member of the congregation at the Calvinistic Methodist Church which met at Charing Cross Chapel, London. It was here that he met Bethan Phillips, also a medical student, who was to become his wife and lifelong companion. It was also at Charing Cross Chapel that he honed his debating skills, as he and the members of his Sunday school would spend many hours on a Sunday afternoon arguing the fine points of Scripture with each other. However, there was another debate occurring during that time, but it was private and known only within Martin himself. Martin and his brothers had all joined their church back in Wales in 1914, at the encouragement of their minister, but Martin was now beginning to take a hard look at the reality of his spiritual condition. He later wrote, For many years I thought I was a Christian, when in fact I was not. It was only later that I came to see that I had never been a Christian, and became one. As he struggled with his salvation, a grace truth came into focus. He had not really heard sound preaching of the gospel in his early life. As he said, What I needed was preaching that would convict me of sin and bring me to repentance and tell me something about regeneration. But I never heard that. The preaching we had was always based on the assumption that we were all Christians. As the young doctor read for himself, he slowly but surely saw the logic and power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like the waves of the incoming tide, the reality of God's grace swept over Martin Lloyd-Jones's heart until trusting Christ was all he could do. As surely as that reality overwhelmed him personally, it overwhelmed him professionally. Soon it became apparent that God was calling him to preach. Once. He had been a medical doctor. Now he was to become the doctor, a physician of souls, first in his native Wales, then London, and eventually the world. In early 1927, Martin, now married to Bethan, to the much publicized amazement of many, turned his back on medicine and accepted the call to be pastor of the Bethlehem Forward Mission Church in Sandfields, Aberavon, an industrial town in South Wales 
dominated by the huge Port Talbot steelworks. Few people in Aberavon at that time were well educated, but Dr. Lloyd Jones believed strongly that working class people were just as capable of listening and responding to preaching as anyone else, and his particular style of preaching reflected this. It was strongly expository, making clear to his congregation that the message of Jesus Christ was open to the worst sinner in Aberavon. That was just as well, since the town had many contenders for that title. Being a native Welshman, the doctor knew how easily his fellow countrymen could be stirred by emotion. In fact, many preachers used this emotional style to gain conversions. But in reality, these so-called conversions never truly had any lasting benefits. Being a qualified doctor, he felt that the medical approach was the best. He decided he would treat his hearers like patients, and this meant starting not with their easily led emotions, but with their heads. The mind had to be struck first. So his message, therefore, was that Christian faith was very relevant and urgently important. He broke all kinds of rules that modern preachers would regard as essential. For example, he never cracked jokes in the pulpit or used any kind of anecdote or personal story or looked at the latest newspaper headlines as an idea for a text. Instead, he based his sermon solely and firmly on the message of the Bible. Dr. Lloyd-Jones was to spend the next eleven years as pastor of the church in Aberavon, and the church witnessed remarkable growth during this period, especially during the years 1930 to 1931, when the church experienced particularly powerful demonstrations of the Holy Spirit at work in terms of frequent and astonishing conversions, as notorious sinners turned to Christ. Because the doctor believed that working-class people were every bit as capable of logical biblical debate as those who were highly educated, the membership grew not just numerically but in maturity, and a number of his men went on to become pastors themselves. Dr. Lloyd-Jones would often argue that the men in his congregation, unskilled or unlettered as many of them were, had a finer grasp of the great biblical doctrines as did learned professors of theology with numerous degrees to their names. Inevitably, the wider world began to hear about the amazing work that the Lord was doing in Aberavon, and invitations for the doctor to preach elsewhere began to be extended to him, and soon he was travelling to Canada and the United States of America. Of all the Christian activities in which the doctor was involved in his lifetime, none has had such a worldwide impact as his work with students. In fact, his involvement with the International Fellowship of Evangelical Students was to change the history of evangelicalism and make an impression that is still felt today. It was in 1939 that, on the threshold of the Second World War, Martin Lloyd-Jones returned to London to begin what is perhaps the most famous period of his life as Minister of Westminster Chapel, where he continued until his retirement in 1968. It was at Westminster Chapel that the Doctor's great sermon series were preached and recorded for posterity. Who can think of Dr. Lloyd-Jones and not also associate his name with Romans or Ephesians or his series on great biblical doctrines or acts? It was also at Westminster that drawing on his professional medical training, profound understanding of the scriptures and compassionate pastoral heart, he preached the 24 sermons entitled Spiritual Depression, which continues to be recognized as a classical work. If you want to learn more about the life of Martin Lloyd-Jones, then the two-volume biography Martin Lloyd-Jones, The First Forty Years, and Martin Lloyd-Jones, The Fight of Faith, and Lloyd-Jones, Messenger of Grace, all by his official biographer and friend Ian Murray, and Martin Lloyd-Jones, A Family Portrait, by his grandson Dr. Christopher Catherwood, are all available from the MLJ Trust online store.
together with some 1,500 of his sermons, which have been digitally restored and are available in CD and MP3 format.